y'all. Billy and Michelle from Purple Pastures Farm. Before we get started, I want everybody out there, please pray for my friend and mentor, Danny, at Deep South Homestead. I think he's on the road to recovery, but let's all pray that it happens speedily and to get to the bottom of what's going on. Also, if you haven't checked it out yet, check us out. The Permaculture Pimp Cast. we got a podcast. It's a pimp cast. And it's uh, on any platform you want to check it out. But I ask you to download the Fountain app. And listen to it there. It's groundbreaking what's going on there. Fountain.fm. They got an app and it's off the meat wagon. So listen to us on that and check us out over there. Subscribe. I think you're going to be glad you did. All right, start of the show today is comfrey. This magical plant right here, we use it for just about everything. We've been evangelizing the virtues of this plant forever and a day. But today we're going to do something very, very special. We're going to show you how to extract this from the ground and how we use every single part of it. How to propagate and how we use it for our animals, you name it. And this is only, if we're whatever you see in this video, y'all, it's about maybe 2% of what you can do with this stuff. We use it everything from getting our, getting our uh, compost off and running. We feed it to the animals, we'll show you that. And uh, we do a lot of other cool things with it. All right, so here we are. We're gonna say this is ready to, the cool thing about comfort, y'all, when you harvest it, it's very forgiving. You don't have to worry about being tedious and this and that. You're going to find out that you can be rather brutal with it, and it doesn't care. It's like, okay, thank you very much. May I have another? So what we do is better. You can do it by yourself. William does it all the time by himself when he propagates it. In fact, when you order it from us, it's generally done that day. Now, we're in an area where, obviously, we got a dog in the middle of things, and uh, we're in an area where... A lot of this road runoff before we ever got here has gotten its way over here. So we're dealing with rocks, not just soil, a lot of things you don't necessarily want. So first thing I'm gonna do is kind of pull it back from the base. I'd say I'm somewhere about six to eight inches down. Just one of many ways you can do it. Michelle's pulling back. I'm putting my shovel in. And then all I'm gonna do at this point, she's gonna kind of give me a little bit of tension that way. And I'm just gonna kind of lift. This is the easiest way to do it. I got this thing as deep as I can and I've kind of curved my shovel underneath. I'm gonna pry, she's gonna lift and shake. Bam, just like that. Now I'm gonna get over there and do that and save her back. Let me go ahead and take over, honey. Yeah, this ground is pretty tough. What I like to do, I'm doing a ground and pound on this stuff. This is not the, Believe me, this is not a, a comfrey that's really all that robust. We're just gonna pick the first one we come across. And so we got a bunch of little cuttings that have come alive in there. I'm gonna shake it off as best I can, try to keep that in the hole. Now, any little bit of that comfrey that's left in that hole is going to make another plant. So you wanna try to keep it centralized. We could take this whole piece right here. Honey, you got the cutters? I could literally take this whole piece right here and replant that entire thing but we're going to bring that bucket closer and we're going to keep the roots this is part of the root it's best that we can keep them somewhere around two inches long now i got an entire crown i could even cut that in half and make it propagate but right now we're going to stick it off to the side and in fact what i like to do a lot of times where's our rice knife what I like to do is basically take all the tops off right from the get-go. But just for demonstration purposes, I want to I want to have you see this. So we got our crown here. I'm going to grab a hold of it, take my rice knife, which, bam, those work. I'm going to take this whole thing, and I'm going to replant it. We'll show you that in a minute. All these leaves that I've taken off of here, we're going to show you what we do with them. So with that said, it's time to go ahead and bust this apart. I can literally take that whole root. And that's what we give you when you buy it from us. Now you're probably asking, well, why are you sitting here telling everybody about this? Now we can just produce our own. That's exactly the point, y'all. I want to put us out of business. I want everybody growing so much of this that we're irrelevant. I want to be doing so much of this stuff and encouraging so many people that we become irrelevant. We would ordinarily scalp this thing right here before we got it up out of the ground but it makes it easier to film and to convey if we do it this way. So it's a whole lot easier if right from the get-go, William has his way of doing it, I have mine. We'll just take our handy dandy rice knife, which we use all the time. And so I got an entire crown set right here and I got a whole gang of leaves 
right here. Now, let me put these off to the side. Because now that we got this giant crown, I usually take my shovel and run it down through here and split it up. That's one way of doing it. You may have another way. So I can literally take my shovel just like that. That's how robust this stuff is. It takes almost no effort at all. And so now, Michelle will take this one and I will take this one. We're gonna take off all the roots. Which bucket are we using for roots? That one. We're gonna take off all these roots and we're gonna put them in that bucket. Now when you do this, invariably, you're gonna have little root segments like that that find their way out. Here's another one. I'm not too worried about it because this is an emerging orchard over here. We haven't even dealt with this yet, but it picks up where the other orchard left off basically down there. We'll get to that in the fall. So here, I got this one crown left over. This is all that one plant. Everything is in those buckets. We'll cover that in a minute. All I'm gonna do is literally take it, put it back in the ground like so. Oops, more roots that I found. Here's another giant root that I found. And you wanna make sure you do a once over out here if you don't want this stuff to spread. Now, it'll stay put unless you do what we just did. Once you put it in the ground, it's set, okay? But when you bust it up like this, it's not uncommon like this one here is the offshoot from the last time we harvested this stuff. So here we are, we'll leave it just like that. And then bam, hit it with a little water if you want. You can even take some of these leaves and make something of a mulch ring. You can make something of a mulch ring. I do that sometimes, just like this around there. Because like we said, we don't ever want just bare soil sitting there. I can even take some leaves from the neighboring plant and just bust it up around there, just to keep your soil a little bit moist. All right, so once we have our roots cut and uh, in the bucket and everything, I'll usually use my fingers to measure the length. So if it's a skinnier piece like this, I'll use three, piece, three fingers and cut it to length. And then once it starts getting thicker, I'll switch down to two fingers and cutting it to length. And then if it's long like that, we'll just leave it. Um, if it's a skinnier, if it's a piece like this, where these skinny, skinny roots are sticking out, you can just leave them like that long instead of like worrying about the finger length and any, or anything like that. I'm just clearing off some of these hair roots so they don't get tangled up in the bag when we're trying to packaging, trying to package them. And then right here, there's three different cuttings right here. You just cut this one off, this one off, and then you have that full length right there. All right, so we've got 78 uh, root cuttings and we've got seven crowns just out of one plant. So you can plant these crowns like on different parts of your property and just keep the process, just keep propagating comfrey. Well, the cool thing about that is the crowns are going to come up much, much faster than the roots. Um, when you take these roots, we plant them about an inch or two down. It's really simple. Lay them horizontal like that. And then you got to give them a little bit of time, but do not. Do not, what don't we want to plant so these guys in? So don't plant them. Comfrey grows best in soil that's not rich. So number one, don't plant it in miracle Grow potting soil. Also... Or compost or anything, really. The worse the soil, the better, right? Right. And also, water it frequently because if you just put it in the ground and you don't water it, it's gonna come up eventually, but if you if you water it, especially initially, it's gonna come up much faster. Folks, this is why we say when we when you buy it from us, you don't necessarily have to buy it again unless you're just in a big rush to get a bunch of comfrey. Like I said, we we you can look at this um, hazelnut right here and it's surrounded in comfrey. And the folks that say, oh, you can get too close, it's gonna be a problem. Look, it's best to try to stay further away because when you ever do go to do what we did, you don't wanna get mixed up in your tree roots. But as far as any negative effect, we have yet to see anything. And also, Michael Phillips in his holistic orchard plants comfrey around all of his fruit trees. Well, um, as far as the proximity, there's a lot of argument out there. We don't want it this way. We have never, we've literally had it in the same mulch ring and never a single problem. And what you could do, and as we've demonstrated, and we'll do it again, I can literally take this and use it all the way around the mulch ring. But we're going to show you what else we're going to do with this. Because not only is this comfrey fantastic for our compost piles, not only do we use it around all of our fruit trees as often as possible, not only we do all those things, there's a ton more like making comfrey salve, which she does, and also we feed it to our animals, and we feed it in great quantities. There's a reason why I'm saying this, y'all. 
in these times where things are becoming harder to find, uh, maybe it's harder to find more of your mineral, like um, with pig raising, you want a lot of kelp, but we can't get it. And we're in those days where things are harder to find. We've just talked about this in great length on our podcast. Well, this is a, bi- a dynamic accumulator. It's taking all those minerals in the earth, bringing it up to the surface, depositing it into the leaves, and everybody loves it. Uh, not bovine so much. They don't really care for it as much. But let's just pretend that you don't have the biochar you need for your pigs. You don't have uh, the kelp you need for those pigs. Let's go see if the pigs like this stuff, and let's go see if the other animals like it as well. All right, all in a day's work, y'all. So you might be asking, and I know a number of people have already asked, why are you going to sit here and show everybody how to do what you already do? Well, the honest truth of it is, I mean, altruism isn't completely gone from this world. I'm hoping that we can't sell it no more because everybody has a neighbor out there that they can literally go dig up comfrey root, propagate, and then do everything you need to do. Okay, speaking of which... This is what we just recently did out of SOE at that swale workshop. This is what you can expect to see. We got buckwheat and cowpea coming up all over here. And look what you see coming up out of there. Okay, looks like a looks like we're in a jungle somewhere and it's exactly the way it ought to look right now. This is comfrey. This is what we just demonstrated. Over here, we got it popping up out of here as well. All of it can coexist beautifully in the same space and at the same time providing. This is the star of the show. This is Michael. These guys are Tito and Jermaine and all the rest of them, you dig? So look, if you need any of this stuff, if you need Comfrey, world's best deer repellent, which we put on all the trees. We got that at the at the website. Remember, check us out at the Permaculture Pimpcast. But most importantly in this one, y'all, above all else, please get down on your knees and pray for my friend Danny down at Deep South. All right, y'all, till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. And y'all, this is what permaculture ought to look like. We'll see you next time.